when people say what I was asked just recently what do you want others to see in your work and I say themselves mm -hmm. you know with the, the torn with the, the, some areas being rather raw mm -hmm. and and kind of naked it's like what you see is what you get and how beautifully they interact with areas of a piece that uh, seem to be more finished but I like going beneath the surface and my work begs you to go beneath the surface you can't and people want to touch the work immediately. And you can. Mm. I've created the work so it can be touched. It really demands to be interacted with. These are alive. These are sentient. These, they have voice. Um, I am a midwife with, with my work. Uh, the work needs that I collaborate or that I, I midwife needs to be actualized. It has life, and I simply, I guess it's like a child, these are my children. You know, the ones I've created something, or brought something to completion, nothing's ever complete. You just stop at a good place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's meant to go out into the world. And I, a piece is not complete until it's found its right home complete for me, for my interaction with it. When it's found its right home, meaning that the people that it will be engaged in and involved with on a regular basis, then it really starts to change. And people will contact me even 12 years after they've uh, purchased work and say, it keeps changing, it's never the same piece. And I say, that's because you're changing. These are mirrors, they're all reflections. So I'm a midwife and oftentimes it's not until a piece is, you know, when a piece is done and I've moved away from it, it's like, oh my God, where was I when this was going on? So I love being surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My approach to the wood work is vastly different than what it is in the studio when I'm painting. Uh, even though I'm using, I like using materials that other people discard and ignore and throw out. And Home Depot was my favorite place to buy all my materials. <laughs> um, when I, I work with wood that's been left for dead and, and stones, fiber, wood, uh, I generally just put out a call that I'm coming out and what wants to come home with me? and I walk through the woods and I will know where to go and sometimes I'll end up actually digging beneath the soil and I'll find branches that have been buried, I don't know, 50, 100 years and they're covered in rot. Now to me they're extraordinary just the way they are but I do want to interact with them because it's what fun is it just finding something and hanging it. I mean it might be but I really like to interact with it. So again it's very human-like, I, I feel more like when I'm in the studio doing mixed media work, I'm like an architect. When I'm out in the woods collecting stones and wood and fibers, I feel like an archeologist. And as I remove the rot that covers uh, the piece, and then I remove the bark, and the process is one of sanding and sanding and sanding and then oiling and sanding, and then the heart of the wood is revealed. It just I mean, you see this rotten piece of wood, and then all of a sudden, its heart is right there, and the wood is extraordinary. It's never died. It's right there. Mm -hmm. And so I create things that are beautiful wall hangings or uh, pieces that can go on altars. I've been doing wall altars, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just finding wonderful things in the woods that just show themselves to me. So there's an intent, what wants to come home, and because my radar is up, I'll see pieces after having declared an intent that I wouldn't see if I were just walking in the woods. They may have been right in front of me, but I didn't see them. When I put that intention out that I'm looking for collaborators and co-creators and friends, you know, show yourself, then it's like, wow, it was right there all along, but I didn't see it.